Greetings audience. Today we will be doing for you the reaction called hydroboration. A very boring reaction. <laughs> the two molecules you see in front of you are an alkene which has two carbons double bonded to each other. There is also a borane. Originally this reaction was done with diborane. The problem with doing it this way is that diborane is very flammable, toxic, and explosive. So instead, today we do the reaction with borane coupled with tetrahydrofuran. Now in terms of electronegativities, there's something very important happening. Boron has an electronegativity of 2. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. This makes the boron the electrophile and the negatively charged hydrogen the nucleophile. The hydrogen is going to be attracted to the more substituted carbon, which has a relative positive charge and more stable. The boron is going to be attracted to the least substituted carbon of the alkene. So, four partial bonds will form. Something to take note of is that syn addition is happening. So the boron and the hydrogen are going to be adding to the same side of the alkene. Also, they are in an anti-Markovnikov orientation, where the boron is bonded to the least substituted carbon and the hydrogen is bonded to the more substituted carbon. These bonds will break. And as this happens, the alkene carbons will go from sp3 hybridization to s sorry will go from sp2 hybridization to sp3 hybridization the same reaction will happen two more times two more alkenes will react with the same boron here represented as two r's what then happens when this is done is that we add sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. The hydroxide will bond with the carbon that the boron used to be bonded to in the same anti-Markovnikov orientation. This molecule will be our end product. Again, the most important thing to note here is that we have anti-Markovnikov orientation where the hydroxide is bonded to the least substituted carbon and the hydrogen is bonded to the more substituted carbon.